Hey guys, Tammy Troyer, Mount Woman Journals, and I am actually joined by, he is physically here, the mountain man. <laughs> We're from TroyerWilderness.com. We wanted to bring you into the kitchen today. Um, yesterday we did a video on receiving 80 pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Um, today, the mountain man was kind enough to cut up all the chicken for me. Well, 40 pounds of it, right? Yeah. We froze 40 yeah. pounds last night. And and he cut up the other 40 pounds today. Um, you did both strips? Yeah, I made strips up and uh, cubed it. And what, so. and what we're going to do is show you how to can it. It could not be easier. It is so simple to can this. And um, I thought what I would do here is show you um, the equipment you need prior to starting and keep it really simple and um, then show you how to place it in the canner and uh, show you the process because so many people are scared to death of pressure canners um, to do meat any type any type of meat and um, vegetables uh, that are low acid um, you need to do things in a pressure canner it is a tool you need to have um, to uh, really self-sufficiently take care of yourself um, so the water bath canners are great. They're even easier, um, but that's mainly for your um, high acid foods and um, fruits. So um, you want to make sure you have both a water bath canner and a pressure canner. Now you could use your water, your pressure canner as a water bath if you had a, a lid that would fit it. Um, we're frugal. We try to go as uh, simply as we can. Um, something else you can consider is um, purchasing things like that in a secondhand store, especially the water bath canner. Um, as long as there's no holes in the bottom of the pot, you have a good lid, really you're good to go. And uh, you need a rack for the inside because your jars cannot be directly against the bottom of your canners or they will explode. So, you know, there are precautions you need to take, but a lot of it's common sense. And um, we'll show you that process tonight. Did you have something you wanted to add? You know, just uh, make sure if you get your pressure cookers at like secondhand stores and stuff like that, just inspect the st the seals and stuff like that. Now you can buy uh, replacement parts for some of them and that, but uh, you just want to be careful. You know, it's probably if if you were gonna get one at a secondhand store, uh, it was me. Um, I think I'd go and and find replacement parts and replace all the seals and everything right away even mm -hmm. if it looked good mm -hmm. um, be better off just uh, being safe yeah for sure and also maybe do a little investigation and research and find out what canners you can replace the seals on yeah. and the uh, gauges on um, the other thing is um, you can also take um, such things to your um, local extension office in in your county um, they actually test the uh, gauges and um, can give you also more information on that so maybe prior to doing your thrift shopping check with them and see what they they can check what they can replace um, you know they can give you years on them and and the types and brands so it's definitely worth checking it out and I'll put in our show notes um, or the radio uh, video notes here um, a link to the extension office it's like a nationwide and then you can I believe put in your zip code um, so <coughs> Definitely consider that though, because uh, shopping secondhand, you know, we're not proud. If you can find it for five dollars instead of thirty-five, that only makes sense. So, um, and with the economy and everything the way it is, that's certainly the way to go. So, and even some of the things I'm going to show you now, um, you can purchase secondhand and um, consider purchasing from individuals that may be, you know, getting rid of some of their things. So, um, let me turn this off and I'll spin it around and show you what we need and what we have here okay okay folks here we go now um, obviously we have our jars in all sincerity we prefer the wide mouth jars because they are easier to wash easier to fill easier to uh, remove your contents but tonight we are using the uh, regular mouth jars um, just because that's all we have left. I used the other wide mouths for our chili sauce so um, and 
you know, one thing I am going to do is actually swap out all my regular mouth jars for wide mouth jars from a friend of mine. Um, so just because that's what we would prefer for the reasons I mentioned. Um, but you can stock up on these. Um, Amazon is a great place. Um, out here, we're very fortunate here in Idaho and in some other states. I know it's the same where you're, even your uh, hardware stores and grocery stores carry um, continual all season, all year long um, canning supplies. So um, we're really blessed that way. But look for sales, look for discounts, um, look for people that are trying to get rid of theirs. Um, you know, that does happen. So um, you have your jars and you want to make sure that they are in good shape also because we did actually have four of them um, recently that got cracks and uh, they're not safe to use. If there's a crack in your jar, pitch it because otherwise it will explode in your canners, even in your water bath canners. So you don't want to use anything that is um, uh, damaged in any way or chipped. Um, the next thing is the lids. Now there's two sets of lids on the counter. Um, one is your metal lid that you're probably used to seeing. Um, those are Kerr brand and um, you can see they have the uh, seal on there, the orange color. Um, now I want to mention something. If you purchase your jars by the case, they will come with the lid and the ring. Now I'm going to tell you right now, discard your lids. They are most likely no good because what happens is when they are in storage, when they are in transit, and even in our shed, it was 90 some degrees in there, um, that heat that they sit in will cause them to um, seal on your jars and then they will, will not seal for you when you do your canning. I did that with carrots and lost a whole lot of carrots. That was really disturbing because it's a lot of sweat, blood, I don't know, but yeah, sometimes blood <laughs> when you're cutting carrots, but um, you want to be careful of that because as you can see on here, I'm going to get close on this, it has a solid, there's no indents on this and that's what you want. Um, if it has indents, it's already been um, manipulated they are only used once and throw away so again if you purchase the cases ditch the lids and get new ones some people um, will try and reuse them and sometimes you can reuse them but you're taking a big risk mm -hmm. on uh, throwing having to throw stuff away yeah. if you reuse these lids so I wouldn't suggest it and if you go to open a canning jar ever and it doesn't pop and you, and you don't have to take effort to get that lid off, throw it away. It's not safe. Um, now, the next one I want to show you is what you should be using and what you want to stock up on. These things are amazing. These are called the Tatler Seals. Um, they are a reusable lid and ring. And he'll show you here the different pieces. They are. It's actually two pieces. You can see your, your lid here. And then this is your ring. It comes right off of there. And uh, that's your reusable lids and your seals. Yeah, they're both. Just, oh, sorry, go ahead. Just set them right back on there. You know, and put them on. And just heat the ring up. When you're uh, going to put it on your jar, just heat the ring up like this in your hot water. And, uh, and you can put it right on there, put it on your jar, good to go. Yeah, and we'll explain the process a little further on that um, as far as um, what you need to do when placing them on, on the jars. But they are amazing. And the reason we really are um, stocking up on them is because you can endlessly reuse those. And um, you can buy extra rings, the, uh, the rubbers. Um, and stock up on those as well. So to have something that you can continuously reuse um, in a situation like we're in right now where really things aren't um, really certain as to what our future is going to be like. So to be able to constantly be able to put up food, whether it's meats, vegetables, fruit, whatever it is, even even dehydrated things. We are going to be doing elderberries next. And I'm going to be dehydrating and storing them in my ball jars. So it's it's a really huge thing to be able to continue to preserve food. And there's many ways to do it, but in our opinion, this is one of the best ways to preserve your food. Yeah. I mean, you can... You know, obviously, you can smoke, like, meat. You can smoke your meat and uh, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, so you can't... You don't have the facility or whatever to smoke the meat and that. Um, 
this is a, a good way to can meat you know to do your meat up that it'll keep for years you know so it's a good way to go yeah for sure okay so you have your jars your lids now you have you need rings um, you don't necessarily need these for storage but you need them for in the pressure canner to hold your lids onto the jars so you want to and we'll show you the process because we're gonna fill these jars up but you need to have the rings so uh, stay with us here a little bit and we'll show you the process of filling and putting everything together the other thing you're gonna need is and you really do want one of these it's really helpful and we have some metal ones over here on the uh, wall there that are also um, available in thrift stores and so forth so um, metal uh, plastic whatever you want to get but these are great they fit in both the wide mouth and the regular mouth jars and it makes it so much easier to fill your jars whether it's liquid whether it's meat whatever so you want that and then what we do is instead of we do it both ways actually we boil the um, water and the lids together on the stove or what we just did today is we um, boiled the water in our kettle we're gonna put those in there add the hot water it's boiling water, so it's the same effect. Those just the, the rubbers need to be um, heated so that they uh, adjust to the um, jars well. Now I'm going to turn this off a second and spin this around and show you the pressure canner. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, I've got the mountain man in here, and I don't want to trip over the dog. There we go. Okay. Um, we have two Presto canners. We started out with one, but last year when we did 113 quarts of venison, we purchased the second one because it would have taken us forever, and it was a great investment. Um, I think they were $36 on Amazon, and this is an important thing right here. You've got your Presto pressure canner and cooker um, book that comes with your unit. Don't lose it. It gives you all the necessary instructions you need to process your foods. And I will um, put in the video um, notes also some of the recommendations or links to the recommendations we have for canning books as well. But the thing about that, um, this book here, is that for us, um, the, in the instructions it says 2,000 um, elevation or less, and it gives you your guidelines. We are higher than that, so we need to make adjustments um, for the pressure that we use, um, not the time, but the pressure, so that things are getting done properly. So you want to keep that in mind based on your elevation. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like anybody that lives um, pretty much in the West here or anywhere um, knows that when you're even baking something mm -hmm. um, in higher elevations, you got to do mi different mixtures and stuff like that to make, make your cakes rise and, you know, stuff like that. So... Yeah. yeah, so just keep that in mind and hang on to this book. It's really important. I'm going to do a little shout out to a really good friend of mine. Um, you can find Sharon at simplycanning.com. Um, she is my go-to for any canning questions I have. She is amazing and an absolute sweetheart and very willing to share her information. So if you have questions on things that we aren't covering, check her out. But um, the Mountain Man is going to show you um, the components of the pressure canner. And these are both um, seven quart um, they hold seven quarts. Um, I believe it's actually a, I'll double check and put that in the nose too. I'm not sure, um, the actual name of the style that we have. So I will, I will put that in there, but, um, this does hold seven quarts per canner, which is awesome and really makes for, um, fast, um, canning. So go ahead and you can show them. Oh, uh, here you got your lid obviously um, there's a rubber seal on the inside this takes and uh, put this down on it here. it's tricky it, 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 you have it. to have it exactly lined up or it fights with you, fights with you. yes but uh, this takes <laughs> yeah. it did that to me when we were doing the, ch the chili sauce too There we go. And right. then... Anyhow, <laughs> um, what happens is you put that on there, and then you twist that top, and these grooves in here, this locks everything down. Now, this is your uh, pressure gauge. Um, what you'll do is you take this, and you want to watch that. What will happen is when it starts coming up the heat, 
stuff you'll start having steam coming out your top you know kind of whistle like a little bit um, and let that go for a little bit and then this is the cap this goes on right like that you want to show them the hole on it and just so they see how it it's just it's just it's, it's basically a weight mm -hmm. um, that sits down on here and the pressure um, comes up through there and it kind of makes like a hissing sound like ch -ch 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 when that's on there um, but that kind of regulates your pressure a little bit um, and then obviously you can control your pressure with your heat stuff right. but uh, you definitely want to put the <laughs> don't forget to put this on after it starts steaming right. pretty good so because uh, that's what's going to make your pressure build in yeah, your canner yep. so that your dial moves yeah you got to have that on there for your pressure to start building once that steam really starts coming out yeah so uh and and I'll show you more on that as the pro as we go through the process tonight and show you what it looks like so that when so that you have something to associate this with and that you're familiar because our other canning videos have been fast because we've been in an absolutely insane race to keep up tonight's a little different and I wanted to, to spend a little more time and show you the process so you're familiar with the sounds because like he said it made that the sound that it makes that sound you will start to learn uh, to listen to carefully because you will start to be able to tell when your canner's raising in pressure and it shouldn't be because one thing about pressure canning compared to water bath canning is you don't have to keep such an eye on the water bath canner. You know it needs to be in 90 minutes and you can pretty much be certain that for 90 minutes it's good, you can be close by, but you don't have to do anything special. With the pressure canner, even on its, I mean, last time I did the chili sauce, I had it on the lowest possible heat, and it still started rising uh, periodically. So it's just, it's just, you have to, you have to monitor it. You can't walk away. Some, I mean, you can, you can walk away, but you, you don't have to stand here staring at it. Like okay, fair there. enough. Thank you for but clarifying that. But you can, you know, but keep, you want to keep an eye on it. Um, you want to be in the same vicinity. You don't want to just, and one thing too, it's little different with cooking with like if you're gonna do this with gas or you're gonna do it with uh, electric there's little difference you know you'll notice on that we have gas but uh, you'll notice that there's different whatever you're using there's different ways it affects the pressure and that yeah because like gas heats up faster it's more even most times and just in turning it down um, even when it says low I can still go down further you know, where your low on your electric range is low. You know, there's not much more you can do. So, um, and, and then you want to show them the fill lines on the inside and the yeah, rack. I was say this, um, um, I'm going to just come in like this and you can maybe point to the stuff. Okay. See if we can see. There's it. like fill lines down here. It's on the one side. I think it's um, they're like they're they're actually they're, indented. They're, yeah, they're kind of hard to see. You have to feel with um, your finger. But there's actually fill lines in there, yeah, right and here. like you can can there's see. There's one, and then down in is that is the yeah. other one. Like you can see here, this is what she was talking about. Uh, this piece right here. Um, that's so the jars don't sit directly on the bottom of the. Um, the canner itself uh, like I said you don't want to do that so that just keeps it elevated a little bit and uh, allows you to put your cans right or your jars right in there on top you can almost see the rings yeah. there where they've been so uh, that's kind of how that goes now something else I want to mention is on this particular canning excursion um, I kind of do it different depending on what's going on. I did this last year with the venison also because our venison was frozen. Um, I didn't want to mess around with having a chance of breaking jars. And same applies. My jars are cold. They were down in the basement. Um, we don't have a dishwasher. So I can't just throw them in and put them on a hot cycle and get hot jars. Um, my jars are cleaned. Um, but I'm not reheating them back up. What I'm going to do, and when you have something frozen, is you want to heat the jars up at the same time. Um, as, you're heating. as you're heating your canner, thank yeah. you. Because 
if I would put cold jars, even in just something that was already boiling, you're taking a chance of the jars cracking and, and damaging. So my water is cold in the canner. I'm not preheating it. I'm going to fill my jars and then heat the jars and the water all at the same time just to eliminate having any problems. Um, it's just the way we do it um, in some circumstances. Um, sometimes I'll heat my jars depending what I'm making. Um, if I'm, like if we are, um, we are cold packing tonight, uh, meaning that we're putting it in without cooking it. My chili sauce I will cook all day and then hot pack it while it's hot. So I don't want my jars to be cold then. I need to heat my jars so that they don't crack that way. So you just need to, that's where you need to use common sense and think about, um, you know, what you're doing and, and just be, being cautious, you know, that's all. Um, do you have anything else you want to add now? I don't think so. Okay, we're going to spin this around and start putting some chicken in the jars and show you the rest of the process. Mm -hmm.